Hey everyone, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions I get from around the world. Let's go, Jaden from Hollywell Row, Suffolk, United Kingdom. Hey DG, I'm glad you're back and answering questions. Jaden, I'm glad to be back and uh, it's good to get your question. He says, I only have one question. I recently read about the dinosaur Sinornithosaurus who had poison glands in his jaw, enabling the dinosaur to kill its prey with a poisonous bite. What do you think about this? Thank you, Dinosaur George, for answering my questions. I hope you have a good day. P.S. My new favorite dinosaur is Tarbosaurus. Well, Jaden, Tarbosaurus is cool. Um, I think his new scientific name is Tyrannosaurus batar, but that is a very cool dinosaur. Glad you like him. To your question, uh, Cynornithosaurus, I've seen two reports on this dinosaur. The first one was the release of the information about uh, scientists hypothesizing that this dinosaur may have been venomous. It appeared to have sort of a spongy kind of, uh, I guess a gland is what you'd call it, up in the upper jaw. And when you look at the teeth, the teeth are not hollow like the fangs of a snake. They're really, uh, they're grooved on the back and the front, I think on the front as well, but I know on the back. And the, the hypothesis was that those, that, that spongy sacks up in his jaw, when he bit down, those would have been compressed therefore releasing the venom in them, and the venom would have run through the jaw and down the back of the tooth through those grooves. Now, there's animals alive today that do that. Cobras do that. Cobras don't have hollow fangs. Uh, spitting cobras do, but they're different. Um, but the Gila monster here in the United States, Gila monsters and the beaded lizard both have venom in their jaws, and it works just like that. So it makes sense that with dinosaurs having a relationship to reptiles, that's certainly a possibility. But then I saw a second uh, report that somebody countered that argument and said that they didn't think that was the case. So I don't know whether or not it's, it is agreed by the majority that that's what Sinornithosaurus had. But if he did, he would be our first example of a venomous dinosaur. And again, because of the relationship with reptiles, it makes all the sense in the world that some dinosaurs may have had venom. So that's a great question, Jaden, and thank you for writing. All right, Eric from Southampton, Hamp I mean, yeah, Southampton, Hampshire, UK. Who would win, T-Rex or Saurophaganax? Well, again, these two dinosaurs didn't live at the same time at the same place, but for the sake of your question, Eric, um, Tyrannosaurus rex has advantages way over earlier dinosaurs because as animals progress, as time progresses, most animals become more advanced. Uh, we see that pretty much in, in all animals, that the earliest versions are not as advanced as the later versions. And so just the advancements alone would have given Tyrannosaurus rex advantages over Saurophaganax. Saurophaganax is a little bit of a mystery because we don't really know how big that dinosaur was. Uh, a lot of people, and I'm one of them, think that Saurophaganax may have grown bigger than Tyrannosaurus. And I base that on the fact that the biggest dinosaurs lived in the Jurassic, and it would make all the sense in the world to me that the biggest predators would have lived in the Jurassic. Uh, a recent discovery of Siach uh, shows that there were some bigger than big predatory dinosaurs in the Jurassic. And so even though Saurophaganax may have had a size advantage over Tyrannosaurus rex, T-Rex has too many advantages, probably the biggest being the size of its brain and its capacity to have a little more um, thought process than Saurophaganax, and therefore I think he would have had a better way of figuring out how to defeat the enemy. So in my opinion, I think T-Rex would have beat him. All right, Dhruv from Crossville, Tennessee. Ah, Dhruv! It's my buddy, Dhruv. I haven't heard from Dhruv in forever. Hey, George, it's been a while since I messaged you. You're right, Dhruv, it has been. How are your tours going? They're going great, Dhruv. I'm on the road a lot, and I enjoy it a great deal. I'm already halfway through my junior year in high school. So far, I've taken honors physics, physical science, honors biology one, and will be taking physics soon, as well as honors chemistry one. Do you recommend that I take biology two and chemistry two in order to pursue a career in paleontology? Thanks and good luck on your tour, Drew. Drew, it is so good to hear from you. And first of all, let me tell you how proud I am of the courses that you that you're taking. I am incredibly proud of you. You were always an incredibly smart young man and this just proves to me just how smart you were. Your family must be as as probably more proud than I can be. So good for you. 
Okay, yeah, I do think anytime you can take any biology course, it's going to be helpful to you in your search to become uh, involved in paleontology. Anatomy and biology are both very important. Chemistry too, I don't know enough about whether or not chemistry, I, I would suspect, it, it certainly couldn't hurt, but I would suspect that it would be important depending on what role you ultimately want to play in paleontology. So I certainly would take it. Uh, you certainly would have no problems in either of these courses. So I would take them, if nothing else, just because it would be another challenge for you. Drew, great to hear from you. Please say hello to your family for me and stay in touch with me, buddy. All right. Uh, this is from Michelle from Scottsdale, Arizona. Hello, DG. Wait, it's Michael. It's spelled twice on here. It's Michael. I think it's Michael. It's got to be Michael. I'm sure it's Michael. Okay, Michael. Hello, DG. I hope your traveling museum is going great. It is. It's going very well. I know theropod dinosaurs are related to birds and reptiles, but what about the other dinosaur species like saur uh, sauropods and ceratopsians? What were they related to? Ooh, this is a good question. So much information is being uh, promoted about uh, dinosaurs' relationship to birds, but in those comments that we hear, People generally don't say it's the theropods that have that close relationship, not just all dinosaurs. When you look at uh, sauropods and you look at ceratopsians and you look at dinosaurs like Stegosaurus and Ankylosaurus, how on earth do we think those are related to birds? Well, there may have been a slight relationship to birds, but really those guys have more relationships to reptiles as far as build and body design. But again, when you look closely, they're not that really closely similar to reptiles. So I would say that those dinosaurs were just those dinosaurs, and they had an earlier relationship with reptiles, but they kind of became their own thing. Theropod dinosaurs, on the other hand, ended up having relatives emerge from them, which were the birds. And so birds are the living ancestors of the theropod dinosaurs. But the other dinosaurs, when they went extinct, they basically ended that bloodline. So it's a great question. All right, Spinosaurus Brandon from Becker, Minnesota. What a great name, Spinosaurus Brandon. Hey, George, I'm glad you're back. I missed you a lot. I have two very interesting questions. Spinosaurus Brandon, it's good to be back, and I've missed talking to you guys. I took a zoology course back in high school and learned that crocodiles and alligators were very caring parents, as both father and mother would basically take care of the babies. Then I look at Spinosaurus, and I noticed how much they resemble crocodiles. My question is, did the family of Spinosaurus, such as Suchomimus and Baryonyx and Spinosaurus itself, have crocodilian-like behaviors such as death rolls, caring and loving parents, and hunts underwater and on land? It's stuck in my head. Finally, what is Allosaurus's nickname, Purpose, the Strange Reptile? It's great to have you back. Hope to hear from you soon. Peace out. Well, Spinosaurus Brandon, peace out to you too, buddy. Thank you for writing me. These are good questions. Okay, Spinosaurus first. When we look at animals and we see that they are similar to modern animals, it doesn't always mean that their behaviors are similar. Example, giraffes and sauropods uh, both have long necks, both eat out of the tops of the trees, but that's probably where the similarity stopped. I believe the same would be the case with crocodiles and Spinosaurus, even though Spinosaurus, granted, probably did have some crocodilian traits like hunting in water. It's, the evidence suggests that all Spinosaurids are fish eaters, or at least that makes up a big percentage of their diet. And so certainly they would have had some of those crocodilian, um, some of those crocodilian uh, behaviors. But things like death rolls, that wouldn't be possible with Spinosaurus because of those big spines on his back. Those spines are not very dense, which means that if he were to roll over on his back, my opinion, he would probably break every single one of them off right at the base where the spine meets the, uh, the vertebral column. So I suspect he would have broken those off. So death rolls wouldn't be possible. As far as uh, taking care of the babies, keep in mind, Spinosaurus Brandon, that um, crocodiles do tend their young for a little while, but there comes a time when all of a sudden that motherly, fatherly love turns into infanticide, which is eating your own kids, killing and eating your own kids. And so um, they probably, Spinosaurus in my opinion, probably took care of its young up until a point, and then once it was old enough to be on its own, then it probably got booted out, or uh, it may have been become part of the group. But in Spinosaurus, I don't believe that they would have been um, 
I don't believe Spinosauruses would have been pack hunters. I think they were better suited to be loners. And the reason why is when you are a fish hunter, you don't really need any sort of strategery, strategery, strategy, strategery strategy. You don't need any sort of great strategy to catch fish. You basically stand in the water and wait till one swims by and you grab it. And that's what I think their strategy was for hunting. So they didn't require having other members in the family to trap things and, and set up ambushes and that kind of stuff. So um, I think that they probably would have given the kids the boot when the time came. Well, you guys, listen, um, it, tomorrow is Thanksgiving here in the United States. So for those of you here in the U.S., happy Thanksgiving to you. To everybody else, no matter what time of the year it is, I hope you have a great day. For all of you young people out there, keep practicing your reading. Remember, my first chapter book will be coming out in another month or so. I'll post information on, on one of my videos when it becomes available, and you can buy the book. And for those of you that want it, uh, if you buy the book, and you order it through my website or through me, I'll make sure to autograph it for you, specifically for you, if you would like me to. All right, you guys, that's it. Take care of everybody around you. Happy Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Time to eat some turkey. Woohoo! Then watch some football. Woohoo! Then take a nap. That's the best part of all. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.